I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I want to talk about if I had to pick one rod that I have ever owned, and there has been a lot, what would be my absolute favorite? And it's really not a tough choice. So let's give our special shout out to 5-Hour Energy Grape, and let's get into this. So let's give a little bit of a backstory. I don't like to put anything personally identifying out on the internet just because, yeah, it's a weird place. But there was a time in my life where I used to fly fish a lot. E a lot. It's really all I did. I was on the pro staff for just about everybody. I uh, was on the Sims research and development team, their pro staff. I was on Ross Reel's website. I was on their pro staff. I was on Sage's pro staff. There's probably not a Sage rod made over the course of at least a 10 or 15 year span. I probably didn't own at least one of. So when it comes to fly rods, I've had all kinds of them. Oh gosh, Winston, Hardy, Sage, Ruddington, I had Ross when they had them. I had just all kinds of them. It, it was really my passion. It's what I did. But I never got into bamboo because the few that I had fished, I thought were... <laughs> uh, we're going to be real polite here and say not great. Coming from the super high dollar graphite world and going to bamboo was kind of like going from a 4K flat screen to the old black and white TV with rabbit ears and tinfoil wrapped around them. It wasn't exactly a step forward. Let's just put it that way. And I had a very good friend who started making custom bamboo fly rods. He does some spinning rods too. And he was on me for a bit of time to try a couple of his. And it's difficult. When you really value someone's friendship, you don't want to kind of disrespect them by saying, yeah, they're expensive. If you break it, you cry. And they don't fish as well as any of my sages do. So this rod in particular is a McKellop Brothers made by a gentleman named Mark McKellop. And the specific model of it is a young Martha Marie Light Deluxe. Seven and a half feet long. He's kind of played with the taper, which you can do with bamboo by trimming a little bit here or there or messing with just the specs of it, which is way above my pay grade, so I am not even going to attempt to explain that. And uh, this rod is kind of looked at as the gateway drug for people who have always fished graphite because it is kind of a departure from traditional bamboo, which is normally extremely heavy, very slow, and just not what modern day fishermen are used to having. So I would pick up a bamboo rod and immediately hate everything about casting it and hand it back politely to the owner go, yeah, that's, that's awesome, bye. After <clears throat> a couple of conversations with Mark and again, valuing his knowledge and friendship, I said, okay, I will try one of yours. And it, it's always a bit nerve wracking when somebody hands you a $1,500 fly rod that has no warranty. I, I would put a you know a $1,000 fly rod in someone's hand knowing hey, if they break it, I'm gonna get it replaced for free. That's not really the case here. Uh, somebody does a bonehead move with this one, 
they do a bonehead move with this one. So, uh, I was nervous, let's just put it that way. And I took it out and fished it on his insistence, and I liked it. So, we began a conversation. And I am a huge fan of beautiful, exotic, burled wood. And this in particular is a wood called Koa. And it is, in my opinion, an amazing example of it. Koa, if you don't know, I believe only grows on a couple of islands in Hawaii and has a very, very narrow window for harvest of it. And once that window is closed for the year, it's done. So I kind of told Mark, go ahead and find me the most beautiful piece of koa you can find and, and we'll continue the conversation thinking, eh, he's not going to find it. <laughs> he, he did. I saw it went, oh, yeah, I, I got to have that. So my wife kind of teamed up and we decided to purchase it. It took me a while to peck away at it because it is not an inexpensive investment. Um, this rod, this, this was one of the first rods he made. And I don't want to say the price I was charged because again, this is a, a dear friend of mine. I want to say now his rod, this rod model starts, I believe, at $1,400, and the upgrade for a wood handle is $225. I don't know if that increases with how rare and exotic things are or not. So it definitely is not something that most people can afford to buy four or five of. And I look at this as... A keepsake not only do I love fishing it this is a keepsake of a very good friend a mentor and a master of his craft I've had this rod over 10 years and if you look at the handle you really don't see any wear whatsoever on it you can see a little bit on the rings they've taken a little bit of wear over the years having a reel into them but the rod itself has been fantastic do i regret the purchase absolutely not uh as i've gotten older and my eyes have kind of weakened and the type of fishing i do has changed dramatically i got rid of all of my other fly rods i got rid of rods with a lifetime warranty on them that were well in excess of a thousand dollars and i kept this one I did that because this thing truly is that nice to fish and it feels that good in hand. I love cork. I don't like foam on rods. I like cork. And this I thought for certain was going to be slippery and it was going to be a safe queen. I fished one, not quite that this nice here, but I fished a wood handle rod and was kind of shocked at how well it did when your hands were cold or wet. So I didn't have the hesitance that, that I did previous. I debated having it checkered, but to me, it just seemed wrong. It took away from how beautiful this wood is. I'll kind of keep turning it a little bit so you can get it. The, my camera, I'm sure, even though this is a fancy camera, is not doing it justice. We'll zoom in a little bit because, let's be honest, that's truly the, the sexy part of it. Yes, I know, my camera work is atrocious. I apologize. Okay. I'll turn it periodically. I'll, I'll get some photos, too, which will probably be substantially better it 
it took a little bit for me to want to fish it because of the amount of money that it was. And I'm not overly wealthy. So the idea of, oh man, what if I trip? What if I break this? And Mark just kind of laughed at me about it. And I got the same impression that I did from the doctors when I would say something similar when we first had our, our son. That these rods are a lot tougher than you want to give them credit for. I've had no problems with it whatsoever. It does come with two tip ends. I don't know if those are even in screen. In case the unlikely event you do break one. But I chased all kinds of trout and panfish with this. And I cannot put into words exactly how happy it makes me to fish it. And again, being out in the sunlight and seeing the sun hit this koa, it just explodes. It, the colors in it, the depth of the burl in it, it just, I didn't care if I caught a fish. It was just, you were fishing with something that was just an amazing piece of, of art. So, it works for me on many levels. It's a it's an extremely functional fishing tool for fly fishing, but it's also just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. I've played around with throwing a, a four weight on it several times, and it did it pretty well. Uh, five weight, it does very well too. Originally, I want to say this was designed to be a six weight, or it would throw a six weight. I know the work he did kind of reduced that power a, a hair or two. And it does now throw a five weight very, very well. And in my opinion, it does pretty well with a four weight too. I, for the most part, do mostly dry fly fishing. I don't do a whole lot of streamers, so I can't speak a whole lot to that. Uh, I'm a bit snobby on what I get into. I get very stuck in my ways. And... I just never really looked at, at streamers or, or wet flies. Didn't do it for me. It would probably be easier on my eyes to be very truthful, but it just didn't do it for me. Even putting on like little grasshoppers or whatnot for panfish, I enjoyed this rod, which was a bit oversized for that task, but it did it extremely well. So I've spent a lot of time with this rod. And I have to say, if you're in the market, the attention to detail on these is unmatched. I've seen ridiculous money vintage rods and looked at them and don't understand the dollar amount. The sock is thick, really nice. I don't know if it's suede or if it's microfiber, but it's really nice. The tube, the cap, really nice, heavy duty. Even the stopper where you plug up the end of the rod so you don't get any residue in it is matched and is just beautiful. Can't say enough about it on any respect. A functional piece of art that's pretty rare these days in my opinion my 1911s I think they're a functional piece of art now granted I'm a little special and touched in the head but I think that so if you're looking I cannot recommend contacting Mark McCullough enough I will put his information in the description area I don't know what his wait times are my guess is a bit because it does have an awful lot of man hours into making each one of these but if it's something you really want I don't think you're gonna do a whole lot better regardless of the price tag and some of these can get out of control just completely out of control when you look at the amount of hours it takes from start to finish to produce one of these, 
the price tag doesn't seem that insane anymore. It's still a ton of money. But when you look at the amount of time it takes from beginning to delivery, you kind of understand a bit more. Huh, all right, I guess the individual doing it is making about six bucks an hour. It's a labor of love, and you truly see it when you look at it, and then more so when you fish it. And this is one that will never belong to anyone else with the exception of potentially my son. So, maybe. Depends. Depends if he can cast it well enough. We'll see one day. So guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Drop Mark a line. He's a great guy. He'll go over any questions you've got. Uh, I have no affiliation with him. Other than I've known him for... Oh... 25 years? Wow. I feel old. <laughs> so, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this is probably the favorite video I've ever done just because I get to stare at it. I'll try to get some really good close-up photos of it. I suck at camera work though, guys. So, take it with a grain of salt. It's beautiful. It fishes beautiful. Bye.